Hey everybody, Fallout here. So, fun story, a little while ago, we put a video up on the YouTube channel of me and Datto kind of making fun of each other's vaults in D2. Uh, that was intended to be maybe like a throwaway video. I just thought it would be good, silly fun uh, between two friends. And it turned out to be really popular. I don't know if you watched the video yet. If you have, thank you very much. I've kind of gotten the impression from Twitter and YouTube and Twitch that people are actually much more into cleaning their vault than I may have originally thought. So I thought it would be a good idea to come into D2 and give you actually a clean guide of how to clean and manage your vault in D2. I know for a lot of you who follow me on Twitch, this will be very funny on paper because I am notorious for not cleaning my vault. I'm actually very bad about it. Just between you, me and the wall, I'm hoping that the majority of people understand that because I do YouTube for a living, I feel like I kind of need to have a lot on hand in case I need to make a video about whatever, you know, some gun that people haven't used in two years, I might make a video on it. Now, the average person out there probably isn't going to be doing that, and that's totally okay. But uh, yeah, so I know this is kind of like uh, funny on paper a little bit. It's like if I put out a guide, here's how to be seven feet tall, you know? Uh, but no, I'll, I, I know how to clean your vault, how to manage one's vault. I know what to look for to keep, uh, what to throw away. I just hoard more than the average person because of the nature of my work. And uh, before we get any further, do me a favor. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Really appreciate it if you would. I'm trying to get to half a million before the end of 2022. So that'll be a fun goal. And if you enjoy today's video at any point, give it ye old uh, thumbs up the like button. Like button. I hope to become a man in 2022. That would be really fun as well. By the way, if I sound weird today, I'm still recovering from surgery on my jaw. So sorry if I, I'm, I'm feeling better. I just hope I don't sound a little too wonky. So we're gonna actually do today's video live and head over to my vault. I've kind of prepared some things for deletion already. Other things we will delete together as I show you my mental process of how to clean the vault and you can clean your vault as well. So why don't we start off real quick with a couple of things that I've heard from people who try to give recommendations on how to clean your vault and whether I agree with or don't agree with those statements. The first thing I hear from people is delete anything you haven't used in a while. Me, that is going to be a no. For example, there are certain weapons in the game that are no longer obtainable and while they might not be something you haven't used in a while. Uh, you never know. Bungie could take literally any weapon at any point and they could put out a balance patch. They could make a new sandbox change and any gun be could become incredibly good overnight. And it's happened multiple times. If you're new to the game, you might think <laughs> that's a really stupid thing to think of. Um, but no, Bungie has introduced many very large uh, sandbox patches, which have completely shook up the meta overnight. So in the Datto video, I know we kicked off the video with a very funny clip of him making fun of me for keeping a ridiculous roll on the number, which he was right to make fun of me for. It was a really bad roll. Uh, I didn't know I was holding on to it, but in theory, uh, any weapon, even the number auto rifle, if you have, if <laughs> not the roll that I had underdog unrelenting, but if you actually had a good roll on that gun, yeah, you should keep you should keep holding on to it because if Bungie put out a change to the game where 450 RPM auto rifles overnight became cracked, you would be the king of the new meta, as it were. Now, of course, you have to make sure that your vault isn't entirely filled with God, I really hope this becomes meta one day picks because you'd be at 500 all the time. But uh, I think having a good version of each archetype of weapon for PvP, if you happen to be a PvP player, is a good idea. So anything you haven't used in a while, uh, me personally, I take that mantra and I throw it right into the trash. Uh, another thing I hear people say a lot is anything sunset. Anything sunset you should immediately delete out of your vault. You're never going to use it, throw it away forever. Uh, again, for me, not true. There are some things that you definitely should throw away. 
if they are sunset. But other things I enjoy holding on to uh, for even if you're not going to use it tremendously frequently. Remember that uh, sunset weapons still work in pretty much every form of PvP except for Iron Banner and Trials. So a great example right here is the Bygones. This is an old pulse rifle. Yeah, people saying, um, get rid of it because it's sunset, you're never going to use it. I mean, sure, if you feel like you're never going to use it in quick play or whatever, you can by all means get rid of it. But uh, for me, fun weapons like the Bygones, which you can no longer obtain, and I actually used it a while ago in control because I felt like it. It's still a really fun weapon. So yeah, a lot of things that are sunset you can get rid of, but if it happens to be a fun weapon that you can no longer obtain anymore, I'm going to hold on to that. But every button is different. Uh, you might have a different priority in cleaning your vault than I have in cleaning mine. Some of the perks aren't loading visually, but I've confirmed with a couple of people I know that apparently that is a thing going on and right now in D2. Not every perk might always load, which could make today's video way more difficult, but we're going to do it anyway. God damn it. Moving on with uh, things that people say regarding keeping your vault clean. You should delete any exotic weapon. That is partly true, but not always true. So two examples of uh, times you should not delete any exotic weapon would be the Dead Man's Tail or the Hawk Moon. Uh, those two weapons in particular because they have the ability to drop with different rolls. So one Hawk Moon here I have with Killing Wind, another one I have with Range Finder, and another one that I have with Opening Shot. And I like to experiment between the three of those rolls. Killing Wind, Range Finder, and Opening Shot, all being perks that I really enjoy on a hand cannon. So because I have that uh, that variety, I'm not going to delete any of those Hawk Moons. If I get a better one, sure, I can delete one of those three. But uh, yeah, it has a unique roll. Same thing with the Dead Man's Tail. I am still trying to get a Dead Man's Tail with High Cal and Vorpal which my current one does not have either. I only have Killing Wind, which is not bad on a Dead Man's Tale. But uh, those two weapons would fall under the category of, yeah, don't delete those uh, for an exotic weapon, even though you might have the ability to. Exotic weapons that you should delete, however, anything with a very low power level, or maybe not a maximum power level. For me, anything that I find in my vault, which is an 1100, I can pretty much immediately delete one I have in here. I've been saving for y'all the uh, Teraba. I was playing around with the Teraba the other day, I think for either a YouTube video or a stream. Can't remember. Uh, but in the meantime, every time you pull a weapon out of your collections, remember, if you're a new player, you can pull things out of your collections. So for example, right here, the Teraba. If I wanted to pull that out right now to use it, it would come out at 1100, uh, meaning there's no real reason to keep it in my vault. Now, in, I mean, if we're gonna split hairs a little bit here, uh, you do have to pay Glimmer, Shards, and Gunsmith Mats in order to pull that out of the collection. It's not free, but Glimmer, Gunsmith Mats, and Legendary Shards are pretty much dirt cheap. You can get them a lot. So because of how cheap they are, uh, because of how cheap it is to pull a weapon out of your collections. I feel, for me, if I have an exotic weapon which does not have a random roll potential like the Hawk Moon, if I can pull it out at any time and it is always going to come out with that roll like an 1100 Teraba, I can pull it out whenever I want, there's no reason for it to remain here in my vault. So uh, I can just get rid of it. And you should be doing this with that mentality in mind. You should be thinking of Anything I can delete, which is a very easy decision. You want to do that in managing your vault. You want to go from the easy, get that out of here, to hard. Easy to hard. So an easy would be finding an 1100 Teraba in your vault, which you could pull at any time. And hard would be having something like, oh, I have multiple IS Lunas. Which one should I get rid of? Because it's a really fun hand cannon. It's a new weapon. You might have a lot of rolls on it. You might be farming it. That would be hard. 
So I would say go from easy to hard. The easiest things are to immediately weed out things that you know don't belong in your vault. Another thing that you can look for, uh, sometimes you shouldn't really have this problem, but some people might. If you have any blue weapon or armor in your vault, which can sometimes get lost in there due to uh, shuffling things around with Ishtar or Dim Destiny Item Manager, the companion app, any of those third-party applications which you might be using, which shuffle your armor and uh, gear around and you might wind up with a blue. Now, that's going to be a 99% true statement. There are certain pieces of blue armor which people intentionally hold on to for endgame level content. Uh, there's a Hunter Gauntlet with a very wonky stat distribution. I cannot remember the name of it now. Dedicated Hunter mains for PvP. Probably know exactly what I'm talking about. But there is a blue gauntlet which only gives you stats in mobility, resil, and recovery. Nothing in discipline, uh, discipline, intellect, or strength. And they use that for um, certain stat combinations trying to get full up on mobility and recovery. Uh, a very unique thing to do if you're a PvP hunter, but Clearly, we can see that there is nothing special about these blue gauntlets that I'm holding on to right now. Nothing at all. Uh, they don't really belong here. I can very easily clean them or clean them up. If you're wondering, by the way, why am I holding on to these um, Solstice gloves? Uh, you know, I'm never going to wear them pretty much, but uh, they are bugged in a way. This is just a little tidbit I'm throwing out there. These are actually bugged where the last time I checked, which I think was over well over a year ago, uh, anytime you wear them in PvP, uh, your roaming super gets extra DR, incoming damage resist, meaning that if I put that on in my roaming super, I become beefier in my roaming super. And every time you put on a different piece of that old Solstice armor, that effect will stack. So people are, <laughs> if you're wondering why I'm holding on to that, it's, it's really for that little tidbit right there, that little fact. But um, yeah, just wanted to put that out there in case the comment section were like, why are you holding on to that? Uh, another piece of blue armor right here. Nothing special about it. No unique roll. It's only a 50 total. There's no reason for me to hold on to it. I'm going to delete that. Uh, okay. I have a uh, ship here. Any ship or ghost shell or whatever, you should not have taking up any room in your vault you can easily pull that from your collections. Pretty much anything that you can very easily pull from your collections, you should not have in your vault. Now, some of you might be wondering, well, if that is true, Fallout, why don't you delete your Vidge Wing, your Huckleberry, your Soros Regime, your Ace of Spades, your Zanagi's Burden? In theory, I could, right? Um, pretty much any exotic weapon that, that I have in my vault that doesn't have a unique role on it, like the Hawkmoon, I could delete and repull. Uh, for certain weapons that I use very frequently, like the Thorn, I love Thorn. It might be one of my favorite hand cannons ever. Uh, I, I'm not going to delete it even though I can repull it because mine is 1330, which is the current maximum power level. And uh, infusing weapons in D2 can be annoying. You need to get an upgrade module. Uh, you have to pay to get your weapon uh, you know, fully upgraded to hit that power cap, which can be frustrating. So usually if I have any weapon at 1330 or whatever the current power ceiling of the season is, I'm not going to delete it. I'm going to keep it there uh, just because reinfusing weapons up to max power can be a pain in the butt. But if it's not at max power, uh, yeah, you could get rid of it. For example, my Izanagi's Burden. It's 1310, which right now, if I went and did a couple of in-game activities and I got random things to drop, they would probably drop for me at power level 1320, which is already higher than what I'm looking at right now, 1310. TLDR, if I wanted to get an Izanagi brought up to maximum power, it wouldn't take me a ton of effort. Uh, I'm not going to delete something already max power, but if you have something that is well under max power sure you can delete it not a big deal remember that anytime you want you can go back into your collections you can just pull a new izanagi's burden i don't have enough space on my character right now but uh yeah for just glimmer shards gunsmith you can pull a new exotic weapon 
So in theory, when you're going through your vault that first time and kind of looking at, hey, what can I get rid of that would be easy to get rid of right away? Maybe anything under 1320 or, you know, 1320 and below, if, if that's what you're feeling. You can just, depending on how frequently you use it, right here we have a Sunshot at 1100. Again, 1100 is the power level at which things come out of your vault. So, or sorry, things that come out of your collection. So no reason for me to hold on to that. Wasting a spot in my vault. Just get rid of it. Now, exotic armor. A little bit trickier than exotic weapons because exotic weapons, 99% of them, all have a static role. If I pull out the Mida multi-tool, Crimson, Rat King, they're all going to be pulled with the exact same role each and every time. That will never change. That is carved in stone. Uh, exotic armor is a little bit different because when you pull exotic armor out of your collections, the, the base role is very bad. As you can tell, as I'm going through all my exotic armor here in the vault, they range from dropping with a 46 roll, which is terrible, uh, to, you know, a 50, 52, 51, 48, uh, nothing really exciting. Those are all bad rolls. So even though I could pull out any exotic armor at any time if I wanted to, um, it's unfortunate that they would be pulled with really bad rolls. Now, the good news is you can go through your vault, and if you find a piece of exotic armor in your vault at power level 1100 and uh, base stat 4850, you'll know right away that, oh, I got that from my collections and it's living in my vault. It doesn't need to live in your vault. If you can pull it with a 48 at any time for very cheap, do that instead. What you should be keeping in your vault are pieces of exotic armor with very high rolls, very, very high. And I mean that at base level. Uh, so here's a good example. Uh, my transverse of steps, the base roll is not 86. The base roll is actually, take away that strength mod, 76 minus 12, because the thing is masterworked. It's a base roll of 64, base roll of 64. Anytime you masterwork a piece of armor, the total will go up by 12. So you want to measure by the base. <laughs> That's what he said. Uh, you want to measure by the base. 64 base drop on an exotic is really good. Definitely better than what you're going to get from the collections or whatever. So if you have a really high rolled piece of exotic armor, I would recommend trying to hold on to it, which is why you will see a lot of my vault is um, exotic armor because I think that they all have pretty good roles for what I'm looking for. Stompies for my hunter. Uh, we got high mobility, strong roll overall. Recovery could be better. Intellect is pretty good. Usually what I do is if I get a new piece of exotic armor, I will immediately look right away and compare it with whatever I have in the vault. And if the new drop is better than what I have in the vault, I will do a switcheroo. I will delete whatever I have in the vault or infuse it into the new piece of armor that I've gotten. 63 Claws of ah uh, Ahamkara, even though I don't use them very frequently. 20 recovery with low mobility. 63 overall is pretty good. Uh, yeah, so that is why I hold on to a lot of exotic armor. A little bit different than the exotic weapon scenario. So exotic weapons can be pulled from collections much easier, excuse me, than, um, than exotic armor. So good. If you have any uh, duplicate exotic armor uh you can probably just look at the two of them next to each other and whichever one is the worst roll you can delete but yeah i shouldn't have any oh i do oh that's an 1100 roll on my worm husk but still a base roll of 63 which is pretty good overall so if you have any 1100 armor with a terribly low roll delete it because again you can repull it from your collections but if it has a good-ish roll, usually anything in the 60s is what I'm aiming to keep, then hold on to it. I should have nothing here that would be 1100 with a garbage roll. Anything, even if it's 1100, should probably be 62 or 63 and above, because that is usually my threshold 
of what I like to hold on to. But go through your vault, and if you find anything very low in power level and stat drop, just get rid of it. The next thing that we're going to talk about going through your vault and getting rid of would be any pinnacle or ritual weapon. Any pinnacle or ritual weapon. And if you don't know what those are, I can very quickly open up my collections. Uh, they're weapons in Destiny that have carved in stone rolls. Meaning that no matter how or when you pull it, it's going to come out with the same roll each time. It's almost like a legendary version of an exotic. It was made a certain way. So the, uh, the mountaintop grenade launcher, if you're new to D2, there was a period in time when the mountaintop was notoriously overused and powerful and terrible, and it kind of ruined PvP for a little bit of time. Uh, if I pulled the mountaintop out of the vault right now, because I wanted to use it in quick play, if I wanted to be a terrible person in quick play and relive the old days of the mountaintop, I could do that. And I could pull it out right now and it would drop with the same weapon perks every time. It's always going to drop with range finder and the unique perk micro missile. It's all going to be the same. So there's really no reason to have the mountaintop living in your vault uh, if you have it there. I'm going to quickly read out every pinnacle weapon or ritual weapon that if you find living in your vault, you should probably get rid of. Uh, Revoker. Mountaintop, Recluse, 21% Delirium, Wendigo, Loaded Question, Not Forgotten, Luna's Howl, Redrix's Broadsword, Hush, Edgewise, Randy's Throwing Knife, Python, Exit Strategy, Point of the Stag, Buzzard, the Komodo, the Breakneck, and the Oxygen SR3. If you have any of those weapons in your vault, you should pull them. Uh, a lot of them will be easy to identify because they've for the most part, all of them been sunset. One of them that has not been sunset would be the point of the stag bow, which is actually still a very good weapon for PVE. I use it in uh, Grandmaster Nightfalls. I've used it in dungeons or whatever PVE activity is going on out there. Point of the stag is not sunset. I think it might actually be the only <laughs> ritual and or pinnacle weapon right now, not sunset. Great perks. Vorpal Weapon, No Distractions, Archer's Tempo, Eye of the Storm, but Vorpal usually better. Uh, terrific Weapon, the only reason you would maybe not want to delete that out of your vault is because it's still currently very viable. So if you have one at 1100 in your vault, yeah, maybe delete it because you can re-pull it and it'll come right back out at 1100. But if you have one at 1330, or the whatever the current ceiling power level might be, uh, whenever you're watching today's video. If you have it at max power level, maybe don't delete it for the same reason that earlier I mentioned not to delete exotic weapons that you use frequently, if you happen to use it frequently, and if it's at max power level, because infusing something back up to max power level can be annoying. So if you have a max level point of the stag, maybe just keep it around because you don't want to have to waste another upgrade module if you don't have to. That should be all of the easy stuff. Getting rid of, you know, duplicate exotics, exotic weapons below max power, uh, getting rid of ships and ghost shells and blue armor, and getting rid of ritual and pinnacle weapons or anything that you can pull very easily from the collections. That's all the easy stuff that uh, you can do a first sweep of to clean up your vault. Now we move on to the hard crap, which is uh, <laughs> trying to figure out which versions of which weapons you should get rid of. And if you want to know sometimes what I do when going through my entire vault, I'm going to open up Destiny Item Manager. If you're a new player and you don't know what it is that I'm looking at right now, this is a third-party application called DIM, D-I-M, Destiny Item Manager. There's also the Bungie Companion app and Ishtar. There's plenty of third-party applications that you can use to help manage your vault I recommend them all very highly. It's borderline not fun to play D2 unless you are running a companion app like the one I'm showing you right now. One thing I wanted to do today live with you during the uh, filming of today's video, I have a lot of IS Luna hand cannons. I've been trying to farm a whole bunch of them and um, I've been doing a lot of farming and I haven't been doing a lot of cleaning. So if 
you're looking for a shortcut here when you use dim, you can simply type in IS Luna in quotation marks. One of the great things about Destiny Item Manager, it'll show you all of the weapons uh, that you've entered into the search bar. So everything else gets kind of, you know, grayed out a little bit. And I can see that I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13 IS Lunas, which is, um, which is probably way too many. <laughs> so, uh, so what I'm going to do is try to go through all of them and determine which ones I want to delete and why. So I was hoping that I would have enough room to kind of put them all in the vault and uh, and get rid of them all that way. I, I don't think I quite have enough room. What we're going to do is take the ones that I've masterworked and move them over to my warlock here. Usually a masterworked weapon is an indicator that it's one of my better rolls. Maybe not a perfect god roll, but one of my better rolls. So what I can do now is take the remaining IS Lunas and I can put them all in the vault together, which you can do directly from DIM, which I'm doing right now. Put them all in DIM. Great. Now I can go through the ones I have on my Warlock and I can go through the ones that are all in the vault together. So really quickly, uh, the ones I have in my vault, this role I'm very familiar with, it, probably my current best role overall, because it's very good for the neutral game. I have uh, Steady Hand Crossfire, which, you know, the scopes are kind of interchangeable depending on your preference. I have Ricochet, which is usually one of the two, one of maybe the three best hand cannon perks you can have in column two, being Ricochet, High Cal, or Accurize. Some of these things, if you're a new player, they'll come to you in time. I don't expect all the new players to automatically know what the best perks are. And that'll be a difficult hurdle for some of you new people. But the more you play the game, the more you talk to people, the more YouTube videos you watch, and the more people you interact with, you'll learn what the better perks are in time. Uh, we have a range masterwork, and we have perpetual motion and moving target. Both of those perks to me are beautiful on the Luna. They're fantastic. I've masterworked it for a reason. I really enjoy that role for PvP. I will likely not be deleting that role today. If I eventually in the future get a role better than that one with very similar perks, then I can delete that one. But until then, I won't. Uh, we have one. This one I'm holding on to because of Harmony. Much like how I showed you earlier with my vault, how we have three different versions of the Hawk Moon, one with Rangefinder, one with Opening Shot, one with Killing Wind. I like the variety of being able to change back and forth. So when I'm trying to figure out what I like on a new weapon, especially a hand cannon, I like to take usually there's two versions that I like to have. I like to have a PVP role with a good neutral game role. And I like to have a PVP role with good damage dealing perks. Uh, if you watch the video between me and Datto, a lot of the times Datto said, I like to have one PvE roll, one PvP roll. And for a lot of weapons, that will be true. One PvE roll, one PvP roll. But for a lot of weapons, I find that that isn't true. And the reason I'm telling you that is because the Ice Luna, I don't feel like I would ever take the Ice Luna into PvE. I mean, I could. But uh, to me, the Luna was built as a PvP hand cannon. So because the Luna was built as a PvP hand cannon, I don't feel the need to have a PvE role. If I wanted to ever use it in PvE for whatever reason, I could just take one of my PvP roles. So for me, because it's a PvP weapon, I want to have good PvP roles on that weapon. So the ne the neutral game role that I told you about, I like to have one good neutral game role, that would be the hand cannon I've already shown you. Uh, moving target, perpetual motion. Neither of those perks will give me extra damage, like kill clip or anything. No big playmaking potential with like, oh, he's two tapping people who are weak or whatever. No, just a good neutral game roll, meaning that no matter where you are in PvP, if you've just spawned or if you're on a killing spree, it doesn't matter. It's always going to perform really well. And then the other PvP roll, I like to have a good damage dealing perk. So the Luna comes with Harmony, and out of every Luna that I've obtained with Harmony, this was the best one. Uh, ricochet, Rapid Hit, Stability Masterwork, uh, pretty good roll. And then I think the final one I have is Kill Clip. Now, 
if I were to Luna farm in the future, this one would clearly probably be first on the chopping block if I were to get a better Luna with Kill Clip. I don't think that Unrelenting... Unrelenting can be a good perk every now and then, but uh, overall, nothing incredible. Remember to use websites like D2 Gunsmith is a really good website when you're trying to clean your vault because what you can do is you can take a look at whatever weapon you're trying to decide. Hmm, is it a good roll? Is it a bad roll? And you can look over here in... Oh, what did I just do? You can look over here in column 3 and determine, oh, what do we have available? So we know that you have Unrelenting in column 3. You can have Rapid Hit. Rapid Hit, which I would put way above Unrelenting. Heating Up. Uh, perpetual Motion Range Finder. I would put all of those far above Unrelenting. So... In the future, if I got another Luna with Kill Clip that had a better Column 2 Masterwork, maybe tied with these, but a better Column 3, I would get rid of this one. But for now, the only Luna that I have with Kill Clip, and if I ever wanted to make a video where I would review Luna, I would have to talk about Kill Clip. So I'm going to keep that for now. But uh, there's no reason to have 13 Ice Lunas overall. So we're going to go into my vault. Uh, I'm actually going to deposit something just so the weapons glow a little brighter. There we go. So we have all these Lunas that we have to go through. And uh, just keep in mind what we have and what we're aiming for. So I'm aiming for one very good uh, PvP neutral game roll, which I have. And I'm looking for a god roll with either Harmony or Kill Clip. So good neutral game roll, good... Uh, damage dealing perk rolls for PvP because it's a PvP weapon, let's be real. So here we have Unrelenting Headstone. I'm just going to go through each one. Uh, this could be a good roll depending on how much stasis you play in PvP. Currently, I don't play a ton. Uh, there's always the chance that Bungie could go back and retune the Revenant, the Shadebinder, the Behemoth and make, it, make them stronger than what they are right now, in which case Headstone would be a great perk. But uh, if I wanted to farm for a headstone roll, I'm sure I could do better than unrelenting. Again, high cal is very good. Uh, stability masterwork is quite good. Even if you plan M and K, believe me, stability people sleep on that for hand cannon. So I'm currently going to get rid of that because I think that we could do better for that roll. Here we have another headstone. We have uh, outlaw headstone with a range master uh, masterwork and ricochet. That's actually quite good. Um, I might hold on to that one for the experimentation of Headstone because Outlaw, I think, might be better than uh, Unrelenting. Real quick, what I can do now that I have it in my head, I'll go through all the other Lunas and look if I have another Headstone roll. Because really, I should only have one Headstone roll for PvP. So let's just quickly go through. I'm going to be more thorough. Oh, here we go. Rangefinder Headstone. If this has a good column two and masterwork, will be in the money. Dim does not want to cooperate right now, which is a shame. Let's keep trying to open it up here. Oh, wow. Okay, so we do have ricochet rounds, a handling masterwork, which not range or stability, but that still is pretty good. I love playing D2 with shotguns, and a handling masterwork with a shotgun is perfecto to me. So even though... In a perfect world, I would probably prefer a range or stability masterwork for a hand cannon. I'm viewing handling as not bad. And because I think rangefinder is better than outlaw on this particular hand cannon, I'm probably going to delete this one over here. We just deleted outlaw headstone because I don't think we need more than one headstone roll. I'm going to keep going through. Do we have any more? Oh, we have another kill clip. Interesting. Uh, let's keep going through. Any other headstone? Yes, we have heating up headstone i'm gonna open it up real quick and take a look at the perks that we have uh d2 again not cooperating with me we're just gonna keep doing this great okay we have light mag and a range masterwork so ricochet better than light mag but a range masterwork maybe a smidge better than a handling masterwork so the question really comes down to column two and heating up compared with rangefinder. I think that for the Luna, 
I'm going to value me personally rangefinder a little bit more than heating up on the Luna. Now, if you disagree, that is totally fine. Remember that when cleaning your vault, uh, you're looking for moves that make sense to you. If you have a perk, maybe you're a hunter who plays, uh, you know, bottom tree goldie all the time. You use your heavy throwing knife all the time. So you really value swashbuckler more than the average person probably. That's totally fine. You do what makes sense to you with what weapon rolls that you're keeping in your vault. So now we should only have one headstone, which we do, rangefinder headstone. Great. And we've now narrowed it down uh, just a little bit more. So really quickly, I want to check out my kill clip roll here. See, this is what is holding that back. If we had a better column two here, maybe, uh, you know, high cal or ricochet, I could justify keeping this kill clip Luna because kill clip outlaw, great combo. But because we already have the kill clip with a rock solid column two with a rock solid masterwork, I don't think we need two kill clips, especially if I wanted to go and farm for a better Luna, I could do much better in column two than light mag. So, or not even light mag, pardon me, a pendant in alloy, Ugh, I could do way better. And uh, one question you'll have to keep in mind when doing this is how easily obtainable are these weapons that you're getting rid of? So for example, I'm not done with my Lunas yet, but uh, where, here we go. Shire is Wrath, my Adept Shire is Wrath. I have four of them. Some people might say that's a lot. I have a lot of sniper rifles, good God. But the four Shire is Wrath, depending on how much you play PVP, I play a lot of PVP, it might be more worth it for you to hold on to weapons that are very difficult to obtain. So if you don't go flawless in trials a whole lot, if, if you find trials very difficult, then maybe be more stingy when going through deleting adept weapons, right? On the other hand, going through something like an Ice Luna, to me, farming the dungeon in, in Grasp is one of the easiest farms in the game. I actually have a video. Uh, I'll try and remember to link that as a pinned comment if you've never done it before. Farming for a Luna could not be quicker or easier. Very easy to do. And because it's so easy to do, uh, don't be stingy when going through those weapons because you could very easily farm for new ones. Uh, here we have an unrelenting demo. I do like the perk demo. I don't think I have any build right now focused on demo. If I did, I could go reacquire a Luna with demo. Same thing for heating up. I'm noticing we have a lot of heating up lunas which we will probably cut through next we're now down to four lunas in the vault we have heating up harmony why don't we check that real quick is that the only one with harmony that we have uh only harmony that we have harmony being a damage dealing perk that i greatly value column two is bringing me down here if we had a better column two right now we only have alloy or extended mag we could do way better in column two. Remember, use D2 Gunsmith to try and look at what your ideal role would be, especially for a gun that you could farm very easily. We don't need that uh, heating up harmony roll. We already have a harmony roll here. It is better. We've got a good column two, a good masterwork, and we've got rapid hit in column three. That to me hits every check mark for a minimum good roll for a harmony Luna. So now we've got only three left in the vault, which is pretty neat. We've got the headstone, which I think we're going to keep just because uh, in case I ever want to experiment with either rangefinder or headstone. We have heating up moving target, which I'm actually really interested in taking a look at that role. Oh man, I would be thrilled if that had a better perk in column two because we got a stability masterwork. That is good. We've got, uh, you know, some not bad scopes over here. Heating up moving target is a great uh, neutral game perk roll. Heating up, I mean, does only proc on a kill, but great combo. I think I can very easily farm a better roll. So I will go ahead and delete that Luna. Uh, column two and the masterwork, not perfect. Again, handling, I really do enjoy handling masterwork. Flared Magwell, not terrible. It does give you more stability, but knowing that you could get Ricochet if you wanted 
that additional stability I think would be a better option than flared magwell. I do like the interesting combo of heating up a uh, snapshot, but I think we could do better. And again, the Luna very easily farmable. And bam, now we've gotten it down to four. Uh, we've got the rangefinder headstone roll right here, which is a unique roll because I don't have another one with rangefinder, and I do want to experiment with headstone. Uh, I have a fantastic neutral game roll in moving target perpetual motion. Uh, we've got a harmony roll and a kill clip roll. And in the future, if I get a better kill clip roll, if I get a better harmony roll, then I will make the decision to chop the old one and bring in the new one. Now, you still could maybe argue that having four Ice Lunas is maybe too much. But for me, it's a new weapon. I think it's a really good weapon. I think it's fun. Uh, I'm. It's very difficult to get rid of... <laughs> new weapons but i want to have that luna around because i think it's very strong in pvp i think the stronger the weapon for your favorite activity the more you can get away with having additional copies of that weapon so you'll notice i have multiple copies of the messenger i have multiple copies of the multi mock i have multiple copies of uh where'd it go where'd it go i have multiple copies of shira's wrath here somewhere <laughs> Can't remember where you saw them. You know what I'm talking about. Come on, I know you're here. There they are, Shire's Wrath. I got multiple copies of Shire's Wrath. Uh, if they're weapons that maybe you don't have a ton of copies of, you could get rid of it uh, for sure. But that's kind of my logic. So Datto's mantra last time I talked to him was one PvP roll, one PvE roll. I think that depends on the gun. What I try to do is if I have a PvP roll, I want a good neutral game roll and a good... Uh, extra damage perk roll and if I have a PVE roll maybe one or two different versions of that PVE roll depending on uh, what PVE activity I'm holding it for it can be very difficult if I had more time I could go through literally every weapon I have in my vault but I don't want this to be like a four hour video uh, maybe one day we could make a four hour video but for right now I think that's a good place for most people at home to go through their vault and start deleting stuff. I have clearly more work to do before Witch Queen. We're only down to 488. Again, poor Datto. But uh, as long as you're making sure that before a new big content drop or a new big season, that you're deleting a lot of things to get more room, I think you're going to be in good shape. So thank you very much. Let me know down in the comment section what you thought of today's video. Really appreciate those of you who stuck it out. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and remember to follow me on Twitch twitch.tv slash falloutplays. Follow me on Twitter at falloutplays. Thank you very much for watching today's video. Hope you have a great day and I will catch you next time.